Hey guys and welcome. Today we're going to be explaining the full storyline behind Forspoken. Forspoken came out on the 24th of January and is a game to have gotten quite a lot of mixed reception across the gaming world. I'll have a short and limited explanation and say on where I believe the game's flaws are and what it lacks in towards the end of today's video and the end of the explanation. But this video mainly focuses on the game's story. For those that don't want to spend the money on the game because of its negativity surrounding it, or for those who just like to get to the point and know the story without having to physically play it and spend the time going through it. So do consider leaving a like on today's video, it'd be very, very much appreciated. And for more story-based content like this, be sure to stick around and subscribe to the channel as well. I'll link my playlist down below for all of my story explained videos for you to go and check out and check out the other videos if you wanted to do that and you like that sort of content. Along with the timestamps, they'll be down below in the description. You can skip to whichever part of the video that you'd like to. However, before we jump into today's video, I did want to ask you guys for a bit of help. Now, my good friend Amy and her partner Andrew are both running the London Marathon in aid of Young Lives vs. Cancer. This will be done in April, and it's a charity that supports children and young people aged 0 to 25 that have been diagnosed with cancer. The charity are so, so good because they provide day to day support for young people and their families following a cancer diagnosis. This can range from help with financial support, providing places to stay during treatment for patients and their families, and supporting young people just generally, and helping them get their lives back on track after beating the cancer and ringing that bell, or the bereavement support for families and for those who sadly don't win their battles. Now, this is especially close to all of us here as well, because at the age of 16, Andrew was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and the support that he received throughout that diagnosis and the treatment that he had helped him absolutely massively and he went on to smash it and it's way in the past for him now. But to show the support for all of the people that helped during that process and to help people that are in that situation as well because it's an awful one to be in, we want to try and give back as much as possible to them and this is exactly what we're trying to do here. At the minute on average, 12 young people are diagnosed with cancer every single day. And Amy and Andrew's goal is to raise around £2,000 to help Young Lives vs. Cancer and support as many people, children, young people as they possibly can. They've managed to raise an amazing £916 as of recording this video. And I know that for a fact that we can help them smash that 2k barrier. I know that a lot of you guys may be able to relate to their story or may even have lived through it yourself. It's an awful thing and unfortunately there's nothing that we can do to flick a switch and stop it. It is something that we are going to unfortunately have to live with through life with friends, family, loved ones, whoever that might be, may go through this as well. So if there's anything we can do to support it, I'm all for it and I'm really open to helping a good cause. So if any of you guys can relate to this or if you want to just donate and help out, I'll leave the link to the Just Giving page in the description down below and all of the money that's donated will be going directly to the charity. Nothing will be kept for anyone. All of the money that's raised will be going directly there. And of course, as soon as it does, I'll show proof on the channel as well, just to make sure that everyone is 100% confident that it does. Thank you very much for your support. Now onto the video. Forspoken starts with a scene focusing on a girl named Alfrey Holland. She's walking into a courtroom within New York City. Frey was charged with a count of grand larceny, which is essentially theft. We start by scanning a couple of documents on the courtroom table to better acquaint ourselves with our previous encounters with the law. One shows a certificate of diplomacy and or a graduation from our previous high school. The middle was an arrest record for grand larceny, aka theft, resisting arrest and also attempted burglary. And the third, Frey is a child found in the Holland Tunnel in New York City and found by a police officer as they were walking by and was brought from then on into the foster care system. An interesting little detail here as well, Faye's last name is literally the name of the tunnel, so this will give you a very good understanding of how little family or people around her that she has that she was given the last name based on where she was found. However, this wasn't Frey's first encounter with the law, and with there being a three-strike process within the US justice system, Frey was on her second one, and this would have been her third. She would go away for a very, very long time after this third strike. However, the judge gives Frey a bit of a pass this time, and she only ended up with 120 hours of community service, rather than years and years of prison time. Happy almost birthday. It's not too late to start using your gifts to help others. We walk out of the courtroom relieved and make our way down a flight of stairs. 
We pass a woman that dropped her phone on the floor, and hey, Frey, without hesitation, you? picks it up and returns it oh to her. Gosh. Thank you so much. No worries. Happens to all of us. You saved my life, seriously. Happy holidays. Um, happy holidays. Frey doesn't seem like a bad kid, just potentially in with the wrong crowd. However, Frey has a cat at home named Homer that we need to go back and feed. And if we leave it, then the cat will go and fed. So that is her priority right now. So we walk back to her apartment. However, on the way home, Frey was jumped by a gang of thugs and taken on into an alleyway and questioned by them. Oh, fuck. Frey. Thought we wouldn't find you? Hey, uh... Uh... Lisa! Lisa? Really? I thought she was Lisa. That's Chrissy! Huh. Well, in my defense, you don't really look like a Lisa. <laughs> it seems as though Frey's got herself tangled up with a gang, and that might have been why she was in court from the beginning. She was ordered to steal a car for them, unknown as to why at this point, but that plan never went through, and the car was in police custody, impounded. That's why it was so difficult for her to do, and potentially that's where she got caught and taken into court. The gang's boss is becoming extremely unhappy with waiting. Frey tried to play it off with humor, but these guys were not messing around, with the situation escalating to the point where she had a gun pulled out on her. However, Frey manages to get loose and climbs over a nearby fence and sprints away from the gang members with William chasing close behind. Frey manages to get away from the gang and returns to her apartment. However, when we walk inside, it's not the thing that you pictured or visioned within your head. The apartment looks abandoned, almost like no one's living there at all. Like no one's lived there for years in fact. Frey doesn't seem to have any family with her right now or potentially have any with her ever or around her ever. And this place and Homer is all that she has. Within this time we spend a bit of time going through the apartment and going through some of Frey's stuff, like her favourite shoes, a whole case of them. A book of Alice in Wonderland, a book that Frey almost fantasizes over at the thought of tumbling her way into some sort of wonderland and getting the hell out of the hole that she's currently living in. And even an old shoebox in the corner, and inside, presumably, lays the blanket that her mother left her in when she was found under the Holland Tunnel. The Holland Tunnel, site of my folks' great disappearing act. However, when we walk into Frey's room, a dirty old mattress, a few pillows and a thin blanket within the winter of New York City. And this place doesn't look like it's got central heating. This is no life for a young kid, but Frey seemed to have a very rough upbringing through the foster care system and up to where she is right now, wanting to go and do it herself. With even an escape plan written out and taped onto the wall with the date of the 23rd of December. We go to open a duffel bag that was left on a wardrobe and it's full of cash. This was the time Frey was waiting for, time to finally get out of New York City. And this was the escape plan that she had written and taped onto a wall to her to look at every time she woke up to say that this is the day that we leave this place. Personally, I thought the beginning of this game gave us some very good character development from Frey, and it really made me want to care for the character, especially after learning about her upbringing and her story. From seemingly seeing what she's gone through, how she's got there, where she lives and the state of the place, and what she wants to do with herself and her life going forward and trying to get out of New York and get away from all this gang life that she's currently tangled in. It gave me a reason to care about Frey leaving this place and want the best for her as a person. And Home of the Cat allows Frey to care for someone like she would have wanted her to be cared for. She knows how it felt to be abandoned, so she didn't want the same thing to happen to Homer so she took Homer in. Maybe that's just me, but I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down below on this, and personally, it's a strong start in terms of the story. The dialogue and the gameplay, though, is a completely different story. So busy recently. Oh, well, you know, important things to do. Riding court, slaying dragons. I'll let you in on a secret, but I'm a pretty big deal. Real big deal. Everybody needs me. We are getting out of the city, Homer. Away from the assholes, the garbage, the cops. I, I thought it was just enough to get us started. 
Yeah. I promise we'll go somewhere that loves cats. Even ones like you. I just can't wait for clean air. Bright skies. No more chases, no more cops, no more fights. to be any other place but this. <laughs> Frey falls asleep and tomorrow she will leave the city for good and hopefully start her new life going forward. However, suddenly, Frey's woken up by the smell of smoke, and when she opens her eyes, she finds the whole place has gone up in flames. <coughs> Shit! Uh, Homer! Girl, come on, we gotta go! She quickly rises and immediately, without question, moves to go and find Homer, find Homer even before taking the money that she'd built up. Which, could I just Homer. say, makes absolutely no sense, considering the bag was next to her, and it was very clear that Homer was in the other room, so she could have just took it and then got out. But hey-ho. We eventually find Homer into the other room. However, Homer. it was too late to go back and take the bag from the room, as it was covered in flames. However, when Frey removed the ball from the window to escape the flaming apartment, she found that the gang from yesterday followed her home and found where she was living. And they set fire to the entire block of apartments in that building. Engulfed the abandoned building in the Hell's Kitchen district of Manhattan has been ruled as arson. Luckily, no one was harmed in the fire. The FDMY believe it was set by some local gang members. The suspects are still at large. Frey left and had nowhere else to go, laying outside an alleyway behind a bin, holding Homer as tight as she could. However, a short time later, Frey found herself outside the courthouse, and out walks the judge from earlier on, Maya. We hand Maya the cat to take care of, whilst we think of a plan, as we had no way to care for Homer when living on the streets. Are you allergic? What? To cats. Are you allergic to cats? No, oh, I, I love cats. But are you in trouble? Good. She likes wet food. The flaky kind. Not pate. She needs a warm place to sleep. Maybe a lap every once in a while. And she needs a bath, but good luck with that. Frey, what's going on? Her name is Homer. Promise me you'll look after her. Promise. Thank you. What are you doing, Frey? The right thing. I need some time to, to sort some stuff out, but I'll come back for her. It just might take a while. Frey, wait. If you're in trouble, I can help you, Frey. Happy holidays. We promised Homer would be back for her later on. And we try our best to keep that promise. Frey needs to figure out what's next. So she climbs to the very top of the sign, overlooking the Holland Tunnel, the place where she was left as a baby. And eventually, the thoughts get the better of her. Happy birthday to me. Thanks, Mom. No, oh, I'm better than that. No, I'm gonna fix things. Get Homer back. Finally get out of- She stands up and even has the thought go through her mind of just jumping off and ending her misery there and then. 
something unexplainable happened to her, almost stopping her from doing what she was doing. And in the corner of her left eye, there was a light which shone out of a nearby room and it left her perplexed. So Faye made her way down to the sign to investigate what the heck had just happened. What? As Frey makes her way down to the window, she notices this golden bracelet sat on the desk. However, as we walk further into this building, it doesn't look as though anyone's been here for a very long time. Who would leave this here? And why did it just shine and stop her from doing what she was about to do? Frey walks up to the object and interacts with it, and suddenly it lights up, and Frey's transported somewhere completely unknown to her. Frey was dropped into some random place, and when she turns around, she sees the portal that she just came through, and it slowly starts to close. Quite rightly, Frey is kind of freaking out right now at this point. However, ultimately, this was what she wanted. Her Alice in Wonderland dream is finally coming to fruition. It's what she always wanted. Probably not in this fashion, though. <sighs> Frey slowly walks outside, really, really curious as to where she is, but also very cautious as well, and onto a balcony overlooking this city or this world that it seemed like. And it's probably safe to say that she's definitely not in New York anymore. She speaks to herself. Where on earth is this? Athia. Who's there? I'm technically not nervous. Well, not what you would call nervous anyway. I swear to God, asshole, show yourself. Show myself? I've shown. I'm showing. I can't get more showed. Show myself in tears. Where are you? Right here at the end of your arm. The thing that you so fruitlessly tried to remove. Frey was freaked out, as would anyone be, right? Oh, yes, so oh, perhaps you're smarter than you look. No. Yes. N no. Yes. You, the one talking to me right now, are this... Cuff? The cuff that we had found in that abandoned room talk can cuff. talk to us? We have no particular name for it as of now. Uh, it's not known by a name or anything in particular, as far as we know so far. Yeah, no, it's definitely bad. No, no, no. This is bad shit, bananas. Oh, and yet it's the truth. Stop your hurting me now. Seriously? No. Throughout this section of the game, we learn that the cuff isn't just something that speaks, but it's bonded to Frey. It can see what Frey sees. It can sense what she's feeling voice an opinion on matters it doesn't totally agree with, or point her in the right direction where she may be going off track. However, suddenly, Frey hears something in the distance as she makes her way into the big grand hall. Is that a motherfucking dragon? Don't let it see you. What do you think? We climb over this wall and this is our opportunity to be able to start sparking a conversation with the cuff and just asking what's going on here, how he can talk for one, and why it was in that shop. Initially we asked the cuff what he is, he didn't really answer the question though, he kind of avoided it, which was a bit of a red flag to me at the beginning. How did the cuff end up in that store? Well, the cuff states that he doesn't really know himself. Before he visited Earth and ended up within New York, the cuff was in Athea. The cuff was unsure as to how it ended up in that store in particular, then Frey asked the question as to how it became a bracelet. 
The cuff never used to be in this form. He traveled to Athea, however, it was never his home. The cuff traveled to Athea before it was in this bracelet or vambrace form. However, it never lived in Athea. And when it arrived here, there was a massive conflict. There was a group called the Tantas. These are powerful sorcerers that once ruled over Athea's four existing realms. Each Tanta embodied a different virtue, which in turn shaped how they choose to rule. The four Tantas go by Tanta Prav, which is the Tanta of Justice, Tanta Sila, which is the Tanta of Strength, Tanta Olas, which is the Tanta of Wisdom, and Tanta Sinta, which is the Tanta of Love. They were much loved by the people of Athea, who enjoyed the lives of plenty under their guidance. However, according to the Cuff, all was not as necessarily as harmonious as it might have seemed on the surface, as there was a great darkness within that wasn't made known, which resulted in the demise of the Tanta. Janun is one of the realms in Athea and is controlled by Tanta Sinta, the Tanta of Love. This is where we are right now and where we're trying to traversing through. Anyway, now that we've asked our questions to the Cuff, he lets us know of a settlement a little bit further down the path, which is the city of Janun. However, as we walk outside the castle, we see our first piece of Athian wildlife. At first, Frey tries to be friendly with it. However, as it turned around, it didn't look that way at all. Seriously, I wouldn't. Let's just keep moving. Why are you so freaked out by this fella? <laughs> Because it's not as it seems. You tell me that now? Shit! Well, don't just stand there. When Frey takes on her first monster and realizes what she could do with the power that she possessed, rightly so, she was a little bit surprised by it. My assistance. I did not just do that. We did. I just moosh it with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just move shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. Now you're just being ridiculous. Oh, that's too far. Good to know there's a line. If you could just master these new abilities, with my help, of course. Um, did you not just see me take out that gnarly beast? Oh, bring it, you ankle monsters. Frey learns of her new ability, using the power of the cuff to sprint and parkour around the ruins and much, much more, even fight it with different powers that she didn't know she could do. We eventually ended up in the town of Janoon, so we can take a moment to explore and look for a place to rest up and set up camp. However, it seems as though the reason and the overall thought behind the lack of people within the world of Athea and the town Janoon is because of an event called the Break. We're still to learn a lot more around the Break, but for now, whatever it is, it's caused catastrophic problems across Athea and has done for a long, long time. We finally enter the building where we look to set up camp. And it's here that we find a series of notes and other bits around the history that tells us more around this world and what happened here in Janoon particularly. Athea was once a rich and vibrant land, full of life and full of laughter. But then the corruption came, and from that day it emerged. It was clear that nothing would ever be the same again for its once carefree people. Those it touched were lost forever. Those lucky enough to escape it were forced to abandon their homes and flee to the capital, Sepol, the only place where safety could be found, or so they believed at the time. Moving further through the cabin too, we find one that explains a little bit more around Athea in general, about how it has four main realms governed by the Tanta. The north lies Janoon, which is where we are right now, with its rich forests, to the east of Praenost, with heavy mountain lines. Westward we have the great plains of Visoria, that stretch off into the horizon, and in the south, the shimmering waters of Avalet, glistening in the sun. Or at least they did before the corruption brought misery and ruin upon the land. Anyway, after we'd looked around, we make our way into the bedroom and get some well-needed rest, just to kind of process everything that's just happened. However, suddenly, Frey is woken a short time later with a blue type hue showing through the doors and the cracks from outside. Frey gets up and walks outside and the atmosphere almost looked to have turned a thick blue, with a storm smothering the land. As she looks around, 
She finds an animal trying to run through the storm, and it's completely shredded apart with no explanation as to why. Is the storm doing this? Why isn't it doing anything to Frey though? So just bear that in mind throughout the story. Frey sprints out of there and tries to avoid this storm. However, as she enters the courtyard, she suddenly comes head to head with the dragon that we thought we avoided earlier on, just as we entered Athea. And we have no choice but to use our powers to fight back. We fight the dragon and finally find a window to run out of there. And we walk over the wall and again out of nowhere, it's back. The dragon's back. We continue to fight the dragon, but this time it gets the better of Frey. The dragon picks her up and it flies off with us. So somewhere else within Athea. The dragon flies as far away into another realm in Athea, and Frey has the plan to try and attack the giant in order to try and to let it let go, so that it would free us and we would be able to find our own way. Frey does this and it sends the dragon flying down to the land, and it leaves Frey hanging on for dear life beside a cliff edge as the dragon disappears through some form of portal. Are you alright? Uh, I think so. One very similar to what we came through. So again, keep that in mind as we go along. However, the place which the dragon had left us, it looks as though there's a town not too far up from the cliffside. So we take a walk up to investigate and see what's going on here. We finally make it up the hill and find two guards standing on top of the wall in some form of gated community. Frey believes that she's saved and that they're both going to help her immediately. However, this was not the case. They grab Frey, cuff her, and take her into the leaders. And uh, ironically, she's back in the courthouse, but this time in a completely different world. The city seemed very wary of Frey's presence. She moves to the courtroom, and they're all very concerned. Not to mention she speaks to the cuff, and no one else can hear the cuff speak. It's entirely within her head. Again, this concerns people even further, maybe thinking that she's speaking to the devil, or she's just batshit crazy. They all believe that she's from hell and that she represents the devil and obviously speaking to the cuff didn't help that. No one can survive these corrupted lands. However, Frey did. And as we've seen by the wildlife that ran straight through, it was immediately obliterated. And this was a massive concern again for the people in the courtroom. However, someone in the audience named Auden Keane stood up for Frey at the time, stating that they should spare her. This woman is guilty of is surviving the corrupted lands. We have much to learn from her. Until now, we've only met her with blades. Perhaps we could extend her a hand of kindness. The devil will accept your kindness as it bites your hand, spreading its venomous corruption into your veins. We must deal with this interloper swiftly. Councilwoman Ballet, please. very compelling arguments. The council is divided. Therefore, there shall be no blood spilled today. Did you hear that? But, heed my warning, child. If you prove a threat, we will have no choice but to eliminate you. However, the council decided to send her to a tower to stay until they could learn more around her presence and why she was here. Frey ultimately didn't like this and didn't want to go to prison and started to resist the guards trying to escort her there, but was quickly silenced and knocked out by the guards. Frey woke up a short time later and somehow ended up in prison again in another world. The story of Frey's life at this point. The cuff mentioned that using our magic in front of them is probably not a great idea, as they're going to be thinking, how was she got that? And that she's 100% the devil or working with them, which aka the devil can mean different things and we'll learn more about that later. Not to mention, they'll hang Frey for being a heretic. However, Frey doesn't really care at that point and just wants to get the hell out of prison. So she tries to use her magic. However, suddenly, Auden, the one that stood up for us in the courtroom, comes by a cell and opens the little doorway in the center. 
gives Freya a headscarf so she wouldn't be seen, and breaks her out of there. We follow Auden down the tower, and it's there that we overlook this city of Sepul. The corruption, as we can see as well in the distance, is a huge problem for all of Athea. The name of the fog covering the lands is called Miasma. Nobody knows where it came from or why it suddenly appeared. However, what is clear though, is that it's no mere weather phenomenon. It flows insidiously along the ground, breaking everything that it touches. Some of the changes that it brings are easy to see, whilst others are invisible to the naked eye. Anyway, we finally escape the guards and Order mentions that she lives pretty close. So we follow her to a home in order to stay low for a while. We tell Auden how we got here, and she said that she might be able to help us get home, which was a massive surprise for us. Auden's father was a researcher, and he used to research the tunnel of lights that Frey traveled through in order to get into Athea from New York. She would give us her father's findings. However, in return, she would want us to return his findings from within the break, in one of the facilities that he'd worked in. Obviously, Frey was able to survive the break, and no other normal person would be able to, so getting this information from Auden would be a massive, massive for her. However, Frey, of course, had issues with trusting people, which is very fair to say, and wanted proof of this before she agrees to go ahead and do this. Auden was brought here into Paul on the command of her father almost 20 years ago in order to try and save her from the break. However, he told her that he'd be back, but unfortunately, 20 years later, he never returned. He was so close to finding a way to slow down or even remove the break from Athea, and people almost relied on him and his research, but he never quite got there in time. We need to find the research books that were created by him and left by Auden's father, which should give us more information on how we can get back home to New York, and also how we can slow down the break. These books should be scattered in a specific location, and we need to return them to Auden's. However, first, Frey needs a sleep, so... We move to get some sleep and change into some new clothes. One that will probably help us blend in a little bit better than the checkered shirt and jeans we were wearing before. So Paul is the last remaining bastion of humanity in a world ravaged by the break. So Paul was founded as an independent territory beyond the jurisdiction of any single one of Athea's realms. So, Sir Paul's primary focus was to act as a neutral place for all four Tantas to meet, and it was very quiet for most of the year, with no more than a couple of hundred people or residents living there. However, as the break continued to spread, and as increasing number of peoples fled their homes in terror, the city soon found itself to be overrun by tens of thousands of refugees. Today, the city is divided into upper and lower cities. Right now, we're in the lower part of Sir Paul, and the upper part would be where we were kept prisoner and had the council meeting. While the council provide rations that are distributed evenly between both districts, the discrepancy between the two in terms of quality is very difficult to ignore. In other words, the upper city of Sepul get all of the best food and resources, whereas the lower side of the city still get the resources and the food, but the quality is just terrible in comparison. Anyway, we go to leave the lower city of Sepul. However, the door seemed to have been blocked until a kid named Olivia follows us and tells us that she knows a way out that we might be interested in. However, she would only tell us in return of an apple that she saw us take a little earlier on. So we give Olivia the apple and we follow her a bit further on into the city. We learn here from Olivia that the Tantas were four of the strongest and most powerful women in all of Athea. One day though, they will again come and they will save them. They all have their personal powers too, similar to what we possess right now. Olivia tells us of a way to escape Sir Paul. So we climb the wall and just get out of there and move to the location to do this task for Ordens. On the way down the stream though, we come across a group of people. However, these were no ordinary people. These people were infected by the break, turning them into lifeless zombies with unfortunately no going back. After traveling across the realm, we finally get to the guild. After traveling across the realm, we finally get to the guild to look for Ordens' father's research and we force our way inside. Within, we find many different books sharing knowledge on things across Athea. However, as we get to the top floor, suddenly... Who the hell is that? You will please give me a person under that get-up. No shit, Sherlock! You need to know who he is. There's only one way to find out. Okay, Mr. Axe Murderer. I'm gonna come towards you and take off your mask. You're gonna be cool or uncool? 
Okay, it looks like we're going with on cool. Uh, so I'm gonna let you chill in my grass prison while I go and look for the journals. Oh, I did not say there were gonna be so many. Oh, pardon. My Wait. Hold on. Lobian? We find Auden's father, named Robbie and Keen. However, he's seen better days. The break looks to have taken over him almost completely at this point, but he's somehow managed to slow it down. Does this mean that his research has worked? However, Robbie's been missing for around 20 plus years at this point, so it's understandable that he's at least a bit crazy and that the break started to take over him. You will get back to where you need to be. Whoosh. Yes. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> However, suddenly, there's a voice heard from outside. Tantasila's soldiers heard of trespassing on her realm, and they came to try and take us in, but not without a fight. Tantasila, you are in our realm. You are to come with us. That's not a thing that's happening. We fight them off and escape with Robian, and we make our way back to Sepul. However, once we get back, we notice that Sapul looks to be on fire from the outside. We move forward as quickly as we can to investigate, and as we get there, Tanta Sela has broken in and requested for Frey. However, as we walk through, we hear the cries from all the people in the city, stating that Tanta Sela is destroying and torturing the people for what they know about Frey. But we've only ever been told of how good the Tanta are, so what's changed? Why would Sela torture innocent people just to get to us? Frey sneaks up behind Sela and uses her magic to contain her. However, she breaks free and suddenly transforms into a knight-like figure. It turns out that once we killed this soldier, we learned that Tanta Sela was never actually here in the first place, but she was shape-shifting and using one of her minions to try and get and do her dirty work. Sela would never leave her castle in the state that she's currently in, so this is why one, it was a surprise that she was here, and two, why she used her minions in order to shapeshift. During the attacks though, Olivia, the, the girl we met earlier and that Frey was creating a bond with, was killed in the firefight. The girl that taught us how to craft, the girl that Frey started to grow really quite fond of. The way to think about it is that this was Frey's first real friend, right? One that liked Frey as much as she grew to start liking her that bond they were growing for one another and she was just killed. This has caused an anger deep within Frey and I want for that revenge to avenge the death of Olivia, to go and kill Tanta Sila for the pain that she'd caused her. Frey wakes the next morning and walks outside to see Auden. She hands us the documents that she had promised us and mentions that we can visit the archives in Upper Sepul in order to try and find out a bit more around Tanta Sila. This was probably the best thing to do to try and learn as much as possible about the Tanta so that it wouldn't just be suicide to turn up at a front door with no information on how to potentially fight her or the best way to get into the castle. However, before we move to the archive, we have a glance at the documents. It seems as though this Vavoom that Rabian was like to call it is actually called a Tarana. Much of the Tarana is like a mystery. They make instantaneous locomotion possible by altering space and time. How though? We don't know at this point and I don't think Rubian knows either. The energy required to open one of these is absolutely enormous and it increases exponentially the farther one wishes to travel. This puts into question, how the hell did we travel from New York to Athea? How much power did that really take and require to do? Did the Cuff really possess this much power? These are questions we're not too sure on just yet. However, a short time later, we hear that Rabian has run off and Ordens and Frey try to run after him. He was found causing trouble trying to cut down a sacred tree in Sepul. Taking a chunk out of this tree, however, will apparently help a lot in terms of casualties and for him personally, which is why Rabian was trying to cut it out. This type of tree contains a particular type of resin that Rabian would find around where he was based and doing his research. This can help fight back against the break and Rabian has a method to create concoction to smother across the people of Sepul 
and help himself of course too to slow down the spread of the break on the human body. This is why he was able to last 20 years surrounded by the break. This concoction that he created helped slow the effects down and even in some cases stop them completely. In the cases where this concoction wore off we can see on the side of his head that the break started to settle in but if he's going 20 years in the break you've got to have a pretty good concoction to do that and this is exactly what he was trying to create and create as a remedy for himself to slow it down that's already within him and the other people within Sepul. Anyway, we move to the archives in Upper Sepul to find out more around Tantasila. And when we walk inside, we meet the archivist, Johidi. So these are the archives. Catch! Whoa. What is this? And who are you? I'm the archivist. Ordin tell me you were clever. How do you not know what a book is? No, I know what a book is. Ah, ah, ah. You don't look like an archivist. You don't look like a hero. And that's because I'm not. I used to be a blacksmith before. Built weapons for the very woman that raided our city. She and I were quite close. She trusted me, and I trusted her. Sorry. No matter, it was another time. She was another woman, as was I. Jahidi used to be a blacksmith for Tanta Sila back in the day. However, when she turned, she packed up a blacksmith in days and just did what the people needed. Sila, she was so much different back in the day, apparently. She is and was the strongest and most formidable of all the Tantas. She is so strong that she could destroy an army with her bare hands and powers. A scary thought for the people of Sepul, especially when she invaded and caused havoc around. If we were to kill Tanta Sila, we would have wiped out one of the most dangerous Tanta in Athea and rid the break from spreading within her realm. Jahidi passes the floor plan to Sila's castle, and at first glance, we see that the stronghold looks to be nigh on impenetrable, with walls almost capable of keeping any enemy at bay. We take a bit of a look around to familiarize ourselves with exactly what the Tanta is, how Sila turned into this monster, and if there's anything on where the others are, and how they too turned into these monsters. The Tanta used to rule Athea, and people used to absolutely love them, and some still do. But what changed is still a question we don't know. We find another archive that states, without warning, our former protectors became our oppressors. The difference in their conduct was perplexing to many, as they went from these loving godlike figures to these extremely aggressive ones, almost warping a mockery of their former selves. Tanta Sila and Tanta Prav suddenly trusted no one, going so far to intentionally harm innocents for almost no reason at all. Tanta Sinta and Olas, however, vanished entirely and abandoning their subjects to the encroaching corruption, leaving them all to die. This is the sad state of Athea today, a land governed by no one, and ruled by nothing but fear and the break. The corruption continued to ravage the lands of Athea, robbing the people of food, their homes, and even the lives of many. The people prayed for Tantus to save them, just like they saved Athea before. And yet, even the people trembled with fear the cognizance told the people something that they just couldn't bring themselves to believe. The corruption was coming from the very castles of the Tantas themselves, and that the former protectors of Athea might actually be the source of the break and the corruption. So, could the Tanta be the cause of the break? Could they be what's causing the break to have originally started and spread across the realms? Interesting. We continue to traverse through Praenost and eventually come across the depths of the corruption. This is a place where the break is highly concentrated, and consequently, the deadliest. What the? I'm floating. I suppose it must be something to do with how heavy the break is here. Huh. No way. This place is so weird. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure it's intensely amusing. Now, shall we be on our way? Wait, am I breathing underwater? The thicker the break becomes, the less the rules of the normal world apply. Well, not much is going to surprise me after this. Anyway, we continue to buzz through, and suddenly, as we enter, 
There's the dragon from earlier again, circling around. Almost, it's like it's searching for us. We hide in the entrance of this compound and we wait for it to pass in order to avoid as much confrontation as possible. Yep, I'll second that. <sighs> this entire place is full of barriers before you reach the Tantasilas castle. Here we have a castle full of ramparts. These ramparts are the things that Sila impersonated and infiltrated support with at the beginning. However, we have finally take them out and push our way through the gate. And suddenly, a break storm hits. Luckily, Frey can survive these, but if this was any normal person, they would have been obliterated like that. We sprint our way through and find some shelter for the night and escape the break monsters throughout. We finally get there and get some sleep. That was batshit crazy. Can I live on the street with the cattle's company? But I would rather be there, alone, than spend one more minute in this fucking hellhole. I'm trying to get some sleep. This would be better in the morning. Yeah, sure. Much better. Uh, in case you forgot, I'm on my way to battle a boss bitch tomorrow. We finally make our way to Silas Castle and make our way to the top of the front gate. At this point, from all we found out, we finally make our way to Silas Castle and make our way to the top of the front gate. At this point, from all we found out, the Tantas caused the break somehow. We don't know how at this point, but they seem to have caused it in some way. So we enter the castle and walk through the red covered grounds, inspecting all of the pictures and the paintings. However, one of the most interesting paintings that was placed directly at the entrance was the Battle of Reddig. The Purge of the Reddig. Yeah, I saw that mentioned in a book from the archives. So the Athians fought a war way back when? Yes, the Reddig were their opponents, I believe. And the Tantas led their people in a battle. Indeed they did. Quite literally, they fought on the very front lines. Wow. They were pretty good leaders before they went batshit crazy, huh? The four Tantas were to remind you, Tanta Prav, the Tanta of Justice, Tanta Sila, the Tanta of Strength, Tanta Olas, the Tanta of Wisdom, and Tanta Sinta, the Tanta of Love. We eventually get to the end of the corridor, enter the throne room, and there on the throne is Tanta Sila. No name for a demon. I am surprised you made it this far. I'm impressed. Is that actually you? Or are you hiding behind one of your puppets again? I am the one you seek. The one and only Tanta Sila. So, face to face with the kitty killer herself. There will always be casualties in war. Great, no war, no casualties. Sounds good to me. Simple-minded, silly girl, naive. There will always be war. No, there doesn't have to be. But you and your goons don't care who you hurt. You killed a child. A little girl. Her blood is on your hands. No. It is you who trespassed on my land. You who set this battle in motion. You disregard rules and then act as if you are the victim. Take responsibility for your actions, as I will for mine. No time like the present. Oh, the hell? <laughs> this is how you wish to proceed. So be it! <laughs> We finally killed Sider after a long three-stage battle, and there, rolling towards us, was Silas Cuff. One extremely similar, if not identical, to ours. Does this mean that Frey's a Tanta with this cuff on? And this cuff belonged to one in the past? Interesting to think about and to bear this in mind. Anyway, now Sila is dead, we return to Sir Paul to give the council the news and join the celebration in Faye's honour. And even have a little bit of a dance with the locals here and there as well. 
It's been a long time since the people of Sapol have been able to have a dance, a party, and to let their hair down and just enjoy themselves. The break within Silas' part of the realm was completely gone, and this was completely down to the doing of Frey. We partied late on into the night with the locals, their first party in a long, long time, when suddenly a break storm comes out of nowhere and surrounds the city of Sapol. The more Frey moves through, the more we see all of the people turning into these things, these break like zombie monsters. Frey resents killing any of them after just sharing a drink with them and even having a dance too, but she's got absolutely no choice. We take out all of the incoming enemies and walk to the top of the city and into the courthouse again. Frey is told that she needs to kill the other three Tantas to restore peace to the realms, Pav, Olas and Sinta, else all of this is going to continue to happen with Athea and Athea will always be covered in the break and so many innocent people are going to die. But Frey didn't agree with this. She didn't come here by choice and she didn't come here as some form of hero. She doesn't think that she's the saviour that everyone is making her out to be. She didn't want any more violence or to kill anyone else. She tried to leave. However, due to the wounds that she sustained during her fighting, she passed out on the floor. Frey wakes a short time later back in the courtroom. She wants to find Breaker Bob or Robian and she wants to get the hell out of Athea. So she walks outside the courtroom and into the courtyard to try and find him. Again, it looks as though Robian has been near this tree, the one that glows blue and has the power to heal people from the break, with something called the Bellow Must. This was what Robian ran into the courtroom with to try and save the people from the break storm. Again, just to reiterate, this was a concoction that was created by Robian in his long years of isolation and probably what prevented him from turning it from the break himself. The mist will release when heat is applied to it, and this Ballow resin mixture is capable of slowing the effects of the break in the human body. It can even be used to temporarily protect against the break, making brief trips into the outside world possible for the average person. However, long-term effects are not fully understood, and as we can see with Robian, it can probably send a person mad. However, the tree that we were trying to get this resin from has completely dried up and ran out of it. So this is going to cause one Robian to have the break throat flow through his body and the other people that are affected by it are probably going to die if we don't get this resin fast. So we make our way to try and find more of this stuff and bring it back to Robian to create more Bellow Mist. In order to try and find more of this resin though for Robian's Bellow Mist, we need to travel to Avalet. We make our way through Avalet and again progress down through the depths of the realm into the untrodden forest. We pass through looking for the trees with the resin that we need in order to take back. However, all the trees seem to be dried up. We search across the realm for more of this resin and eventually come across a huge ballow tree situated right next to Tanta Puff's castle. We harvest the resin that was needed and the cuff then tells us that Puff is right there inside the castle. This could be the chance that we need to take and we may not get it again. However, Frey doesn't want violence, just reason. Frey wants to believe that we can speak with Pav and try to understand firsthand why she's turned the way that she is. Going from that loved godlike figure to someone who's completely opposite of that. So this was the approach Frey wanted to take. However, when she did turn herself in, she is immediately charged with the murder of Tantasila and brought into Pav's castle. This probably isn't going to end without a fight, to be quite honest. However, a really interesting thing within the trial, where Tanta Pav states that there's a demon within the child of Tanta Sinta. Wait, 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 wait. Is she referring to Frey? Does this mean that Frey is the child of Tanta Sinta? Child, let go, return. Child, let go? What the Daughter. What are you talking about? Tell me! What does that mean? The demon... Child... Of Sinta... Child... Of... Child of Sinta, what? 
However, during this process, it was noted that at the time of Frey's birth, there was plenty of trouble brewing between the Tantas, so this could have been the reason why she was left, and why she had to get out of Athea. Could it have been to protect Frey from the break? Why New York particularly? What significance does New York have in this scenario? We need to find Sinta. However, this does explain why the break doesn't affect Frey, like everyone else, because she's the daughter of Sinta, and Frey is a Tanta. Cuff reminds us that Robion worked closely with Sinta back when they were all sane, so this whole time, she might know more about the possible child she once had, and if what Pav said was in fact true. Robion could be the key to all of this knowledge, however we need to get back to Sipol with this resin as quickly as possible to try and save him from the break taking over his body. We quickly rush back to Sipol to get the resin to Robion, however, it was unfortunately too late. Robion was laying on his deathbed, with the break almost completely taking over his body. Frey slowly walked up and sat beside him, and they began to speak. Tip top, young Frey. Tip top. Hang in there. I. I need you to fight through this. The fight is. Yours now. But. I know. I know. You want to go back home, my child? Hmm? Push. Not just push. I have so many questions. I see. You, you seem to have already found your way home. You knew? Wasn't sure until now. Frey now has no clue how she's going to get home. This was her only chance to learn more about the possible relationship between Tanta Sinta and how to portal home. However, Ordens overhears this out loud conversation between her and the Cuff and walks into a confronter about her being pretty selfish about the death of her father. Frey, in a fit of rage and anger, moves to the archives to try and find everything she can on how to create one of these portals at Tirana and get home. However, there's nothing in here. The only thing Frey wanted to do now is speak with Sinta, understand why she left her in the streets of New York to grow up alone and to almost seem like she gave her up without hesitation. The Cuff was adamant about moving to Olas first though, but Frey just wanted to get things over with and then go home. However, as Frey walks outside to Sir Paul, suddenly another break storm hits and Frey is completely wiped out and everything goes black. However, a short time later, Frey wakes up in an apartment, one which looks very similar to the one that she had back in New York, but this time fully furnished, done up, looking extremely smart. Nothing like the one that she'd had from the beginning of the game. Frey then suddenly gets a call on her cell phone. From Auden? It looks like they're friends in New York. Auden invites Frey for lunch that same day, however Frey wasn't able to go, due to have already made lunch plans at the Athea, and Frey had to be there in an hour. What the hell is going on here? In this section of the game, and whatever this is, this dream or flashback, Frey seems to be the go-to person to help people. Like this lady in the hallway, after she'd fixed her light. A very loved character that's very helpful towards others. And as she walked outside, at the bus stop, 
was the archivist from Sepul. Frey earlier brought some food for her and seemingly she looked like she was homeless, so again it was another thing to help and to show a good gesture. Again, Frey then jumps onto the bus and makes her way to Athea. She walked down the path and there are the two gang members from earlier on in the game. This time though, they're almost scared of Frey and what she might think. They run off and man, she's like a celebrity around here in this vision. Then we see Maya, the judge from the start of the game that gave us that chance. She tells Frey that she's an important and inspiration to the foster kids in the system. And she's almost an example of how a great foster kid can grow up to be like and an example of how they could be. She has a stable job and almost has a purpose in life for caring for other people. The opposite to what her mother did for her and the opposite to what she had back at the start of the game. Anyway, she finally makes her way to the Athea, and there sat at the table is Sinta, a mother-daughter lunch at the Athea. when suddenly the waiter's voice is Cuff, the owner of the restaurant being Breaker Bob or Robian. The waiter was pulled away by Robian and in the background warned Frey and told her to wake up. I never told him my name. Wait. Something's off this you you left me you abandoned me had to be done you must understand the sacrifice sacrifice i was a baby left to fend for myself you have no idea what i went through <laughs> I have no sympathy for a mother who tosses her baby away like it's garbage. I am the victim here. Sadly, we are all victims. Robbed of a life together, a life that would have taught you how to care for others. So you waited. I need something that's far more important, and that's to look out for Numero Uno. This... This whole thing is a lie. one person capable of creating a false reality. Isn't that right, Olas? Right. This was all a dream, all a perception, not reality. This was the doing of Olas. Olas found us walking out of Sepul and locked us up, putting this fake reality around us. It really got me good to be fair when I was playing it, really confused, so fair play to the developers on that one. We progress through this dreamlike world by destroying these lamps, which emit a projection of enemies and keep us locked within. This was what allowed the enemies to continue to come for us and contain Frey within this dreamlike world, showing us what Olus wanted us to see, even going to the extent to take Frey back to the top of that sign where she was going to jump off at the start of the game, almost tempting Frey to do the same again and just end all the misery here. However, Frey fights back and Olus summons her warriors to battle against us. We finally take out Olus's warriors after a grueling battle and are taken out of this dream like New York and we end up within Visoria, the realm of Olas. And now the plan is to go after her and end this once and for all. Hello? I'm here. I'm done playing games. Face me. Curious. Hello? She's dead? Oh. Which means we don't have to fight her. Lucky us. What kind of a sick joke is this? Perhaps the strain of maintaining all those illusions wore her out. Let's go. You know the drill. Hey, what are you doing? Sinta's waiting. Can you just 
quit messing around and do the thing, Cuff? Sorry, Frey. But this is where we part ways. <laughs> I think I get it now. Gosh, you don't mean. That's what the taunters were talking about. Oh, I want you to say it. Please say it. They weren't talking about me at all. Say it. Say it. It's you. You're the demon. Hossa! Finally! The taunters weren't afraid of you, Frey. It was what you carried inside. It was me! Thank you so much for your help. Returning me to my former glory. Helping me to defeat my captors. And allowing me to fulfill my destiny. Destiny? Revenge. Payback for an unforgivable crime. Do you really think the Red Ink would just crawl away and die after what the Tantras did to them? No, no, no. I am the last and loudest laugh. The end game. The end of the Tantras. The end of Athia. The end of you. Now, if you would be so good as to die so I can get on with the havoc wreaking and what have you. was the demon. The Tanta and the Cult were never afraid of Frey, but they were all afraid of this Cuff. The wretched war where all the Tantas fought together to fight against an enemy, well, that was the enemy. However, now the Cuff is off, we have no powers, nothing to fight back against the Cuff with. We have no choice but to just get the hell out of there. This demon went by the name of Sussurus. We sprint out onto the bridge and look to be one on one with Sussurus. However, suddenly out of nowhere, his beam is blocked by the dragon. A mother tries to save her child. Mother? The dragon is the fucking mother? That's Sinta? Oh, it makes so much sense now as to why she was in that realm and why we didn't see Sinta when we spawned in her literal castle. The dragon flew Frey away and sent her somewhere safe to get her away from Sisorus. And when she finally wakes, she walks towards a light which displays two of the Tantas. This place is called Svagana, and it's the wellspring of Athea. Cinder brought Frey here to show her the truth, what really happened to the Tanta, and how Athea turned into what it is today. Long ago, the Atheans were a part of the Regged War, and the war was won by the Tanta. Although, the scars left by the war were extremely deep, and resources began to dwindle very quickly. Athea was still in a terrible place even after their victory. Each of the Tanta believed the problem should be solved differently, and a rift grew between them, and they could not seem to see eye to eye after that. Sosaurus is a demon that lives within each of the Tantas, and lives within their cuffs. The soul of Sosaurus was contained and split between four cuffs, 
which would be held by each of the Tanta, which is why each cuff would absorb after killing one another. So Soros is a demon that lived within each of the Tantas and lived within their cuffs as well, or had a part of their soul within them. The soul of Sosaurus was contained and split between four cuffs, which would be held by each individual Tanta, which would be why the cuff would be absorbed after every time we killed one of the Tantas, as that wasn't just us absorbing the powers of the Tanta, but it was Sosaurus absorbing parts of his soul. The Tantas were no longer the protectors of the people, but a threat to them instead. Sosaurus was in each of the Tantas' cuffs, which each of them had, but that still allowed him to take over their bodies very slowly and essentially corrupt them completely as to where they are today. Now Sosaurus is free and in some form of human form, he will now target the city of Sepul, the final part of Athea that hasn't yet been plagued with the break and we need to stop it. However, Frey has no powers. How can she do this? The cuff was what gave Frey the power to traverse through Athea and fight using the different Tanta abilities. However, the Tantas tell Frey of the powers that she holds within, and that actually, she had them all along without her knowing. They open a rift to show her more, and as we step through, there stands Tanta Sinta. Sinta shared with Robian that she was with child, and that she's extremely excited for it, and as we move towards the ending of the balcony, we can see that Sinta was so happy to be having Frey, and that she cared for her more than anything in the world. The complete opposite as to what Frey thought her mother felt. Ordens was the child there too, showing up in all of the visions. Did she know about Frey when she arrived in Athea? Is this why Ordens stood up for us in court? However, why New York? Well, it turns out that New York was where the father of Frey was from. Sinta went through one of these rifts and somehow ended up in New York. She was mesmerized by the technology, the lights and the city skyline and it became what she strived for Athea to one day become. Who he is we don't really know, but this is why Frey's full name is Alfrey, a mixture between the two. Alfrey has all of the powers that we've used already deep within inside her. There was never any need for the cuff to be the one giving us those powers. She had them all along and had them since birth. How have we moved to the realms of Thesora to learn more around Olas and what happened there and the demon? Here we're shown the house of Sorus came to be, a great evil that came to Athea a long time ago to destroy the Tanta. It must be imprisoned. However, Alfrey may not escape unharmed if she was to stay within Athea, which was a massive worry for Sinta and the other Tanta as well. The Tantas were good people before Sosaurus ruined everything. That was the reason for Frey being left abandoned and why they became the people they are today. The hate, the anger, and the pure destructive nature against innocent people all the doing of Sosaurus corrupting the Tanta and taking over their minds and their souls. Sosaurus' soul was again, as I mentioned, divided into four, which explains the cuffs that each Tanta wore. The one that we have is Tanta Sinta's cuff with her being a dragon. And the other three were on the other Tantas that we took out. When all four were obtained, with Ola's cuff being the final one, Sosaurus became whole again. We then traveled to Avalet, and it was here that we learned that Sinta wanted her child, Alfrey, to be one for the people, to care for the people of Athea, and to look after the people of Athea. However, she was fathered by someone from another world, again a man from New York, named Al. Sosaurus was almost like one massive held secret, in a sense that the Tantas wouldn't tell people of Athea that it was taking over them, as they didn't want it to worry them. So this is why no one knew why they went crazy at the time. Sinta's plan was to bear this child, Alfrey, and raise it as her own. Alfrey would inherit the powers of Sinta, however, they would be suppressed until she needed them. They didn't want Alfred to be found with these powers at a young age and didn't know how to control them. So, she had them all this time and just couldn't use them, even when she was back in New York. Frey's powers were awoken the day she arrived in Athea. Frey just had to channel the powers from within. However, the cuff doing all of the work never meant that she had to try and do that. Then we start to see where the Tanta started to become corrupt by Sosaurus. Tanta Sila, please. To exhibit weakness is a crime. A crime punishable by death. Proceed. Yes, Tanta Sila. The pitiful die just as they live. And the rest, the weak 
must be purged. Let the strong white live. Someone! Help! No! Holy shit. She completely changed. That was the Scylla who attacked Sepal. How much blood is on Clough's hands? But Frey wants to know, why would Cinta just leave her? Why would she want to get rid of her? Rather than leaving her in New York alone, leave her somewhere in Athea. Even imprisoned within the bracelets, Sosaurus would spread its poison, the break. The corruption crept into Janoon not long after Frey was born, the town we first started in and the town we saw the dragon and brought it in. Cinta ordered all of the survivors to come through the Tirana, but the breakstorm killed so many innocent people in Janoon and then later in the whole of Athea. Here is where we see Rubian tell Cinta that she would need to take care of Auden whilst he goes away and tries to fight against the corruption and the break. He would devote his life to finding a remedy to help stop the break from turning and killing people and ultimately stop this madness across the four realms. Auden would go with Cinta and travel to Sepul, where she would stay 20 years later until the day she stood up to us in the courtroom. Cinta was the last Tanta to turn. We move towards and see a huge crater within the area of Janoon, where then we see the vision of a building. We walk inside the building and it was a nursery for Alfrey, even finding the gift box from the fake New York on the side and Frey's favorite book, Alice and Wonderland, the same one she had back in her apartment at the start of the game. Cinta was already being taken over by the demon at that time and her time was near. People may wonder watching this video why she put her through the Tirana into New York, but for me it's very obvious and I'll explain why now. Cinta went through a Tirana and into this place called New York. She looked to spend a fair few years there at least, even going to the extent of meeting someone and having a child with them. Her time there from what she described was almost like a dream, very similar to what Frey had earlier on in the game. The technology, the skylines, the lights, everything so much more advanced than what's currently in Athea, and this was ultimately the goal for Athea from Cinta's eyes. So why not send Alfrey to the one place where one, her father is, and two, where she believes Frey would have a much better and safer life. Ultimately, that didn't happen of course, and we know that New York isn't that dream place, but how was she to know that? At the time, she did what she thought was best for Frey or Alfrey, or so she thought. However, when she picked up Frey and put her through this Tirana, the bracelet flew off her forearm and into the Tirana with Frey. This obviously made Sin to distraught because it meant that this was not over. And it would follow Frey for years and years until it was perfectly placed at a time where Frey would find it. At a time Frey needed something the most. When she was about to jump off a sign and end it all. However, the cuff stopped her. And that's why it made its presence clear and its presence known. Without Frey, it would have been stuck in New York forever and it wouldn't have been able to complete what it started back in Athea. Cinta gives us the choice. We can rather return to New York and continue a life there or finish Sosaurus in one final battle. Frey pushes forward to support on the back of Cinta after deciding to just take out Sosaurus and end all of this in Athea. She goes into the archive and just reassures people, ensuring that they're all safe and they stay inside during the battle. Ensuring that they should rebuild once it's all over, ensuring they do not lose faith in the Tanta, and basically saying that none of this was their fault. Frey eventually walks outside and confronts Sosaurus, and the battle begins. However, midway through the battle, Cinta uses up all of the available energy that she has, and that's the point where she passes on. Frey wanted to spend more time with her mother, ask questions after they'd won the battle together, but this now couldn't be. But Frey had a job to do, and that's to finish this demon and restore peace to Athea. I have so many questions. I... Please. Please don't go. I don't need your powers. I need you. Please don't die. Thank you, Alfred. I am so lucky to have you. And I will always be with you. Beloved.
We finally weakened Tosaurus in a three-stage battle and take him to the Tanta Wellspring, where we were earlier and where we started to learn everything. Here we'd be able to have an advantage. And, of course, it was away from the capital, Sir Paul. However, just as we thought Tosaurus was defeated, he pushes back at Frey. However, then, out of nowhere, the four Tantas show up behind us and we combine all of our powers together and pull his soul into us. Sosaurus was finally defeated, with the demon's soul being fully within us, and not just a bracelet. You're not going anywhere. And neither am I. Three weeks had passed and each person gathered in the capital of Sapor, where they would look to raise lanterns for those that had fallen during the battle and even before then as well. And she could see all of the Tantas present from their spirits, along with the likes of Robian, Olivia is there as well, and others that made her journey into the person that she became at the end of her journey. Frey walks forward and raises a lantern for Sinta.
Hey, Homer. Sorry, it's been a while. I know. You miss me? <laughs> nah, I bet you got a full belly and a big old smile on your face right about now. Been so busy recently. Oh, well, you know, important stuff. Holding court, slaying demons. I'll let you in on a secret, but I'm a pretty big deal. <laughs> like, actually, I, I'm kind of a big deal now. Everybody needs me. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the whole hero thing, but look, just tell Judge Bird I took her advice, okay? I'm finally using my gifts to help others. Tell her, uh, thanks for the almost birthday present. I kinda wanted to be there to say it myself, but it's probably better coming from you, girl. It's been a pretty good day, you know? Wish they could all be this good. But you and I both know that's not how it goes. Listen, you ever get lonely, you just remember. Remember that you are not alone. Even if you find yourself with nowhere to turn and no clue where to go or what to do next, you can't give up hope. You might think there's nothing left to live for, that nobody cares. But the truth is, you matter, even when you can't see it. Granted, you might fuck up along the way, but you'll find your way home in the end. I promise, I did. And look at me now, huh? Tonta Frey. Daughter of Sinta. Protector of Athens. now that you clear the break but it's still out there in all the realms and i don't have a clue how to get rid of it wish i could figure it out i'll continue to study my father's notes on reversing the break maybe between the two of us we'll find a way you know if there was someone who would have known it was bob <laughs> indeed you know the council would welcome you as a member we're alive and prospering because of you look okay don't think I did all of this just for Athia. Newsflash, I'm not that altruistic. Uh-huh. <laughs> Look, the council gig, it's not for me. But I can think of someone who'd be pretty good at it. Who? You, dumbass. <laughs> You're the glue that holds this whole place together. You step up, you look after the injured, you inspire people. I couldn't think of anyone else better for the job. <sighs> there you are, Auden. Johidi's been looking for you. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Would you look at that? You need it. <laughs> All right, see you later. Say hi to Joe for me. And now the real work begins. Damn. That is a lot of land for just one girl to cover. But it's a good thing I'm not doing it on my own. Isn't that right, Cup? It's fair, Bryce. Bro, having Cuff back at the end? Oh my god, what a plot twist. I don't know if I like that. I mean, it's obviously there just to give you a companion throughout, but, but yeah, that was definitely a really funny touch at the end. So, overall, do I recommend for Spoken? <laughs> it's difficult for me to say. I would personally watch this video, get the storyline, enjoy the story from this video, and don't buy the game. However, if you wanted to sink your teeth into the story and get a good 50 to 60 hours out of a game, this could be a good one to play, but you may be very constrained with the combat mechanics and just the terrible audio dialogue 
and cutscenes. So, because of that, I would not recommend Forspoken. But that is going to be the. But that is going to do it for today's video, everyone. I really hope you have went on to enjoy. It's been a long one. I really appreciate you guys sticking by. But without further ado, everyone, we'll see you all next time.